marble, look up marble in the telephone book or under tombstones and they'll cut it for you. It'll last you a lifetime and it's nice and cold. Now out she comes. And if that seems a little bit little bit damp, you can put put a little bit of flour on. Actually, the proportion of flour butter to flour is five to one. So if you were doing it in metrics, it'd be 125 grams of flour to 100, no, 125 grams of butter to 100 grams of flour, which makes five to four. And that is a little bit damp, but, and you're gonna be amazed at what a terrible mess this looks like. But what you now do is to push it out into a rectangle. Just within, remember to use the heel of your hands, not the palms. And always, when you're working with pastry, work very fast. And with, this rectangle is about 18 long by 8 wide. And you'd think, looking at this, how is she going to make anything out of that mess? But you will see. Then you take a pastry sheet and you're going to fold it in three then put a little bit of flour on top, and then fold the other side over. And that gets a little flour. You can see why the proportion of butter is so, there's so much butter, because you have to use quite a bit of flour, and flour the bottom of it. And then you're gonna make four rollings out and foldings up into three. And if you're doing it in the conventional manner, you can make two and then you have to refrigerate things. But I should have put a little more flour on the top of that. But the reason that the butter is in lumps like this is so that it will make layers with the dough every time you roll it out. Now that gets folded in three again. Now the other side. Now that's two turns that it's had. I think actually I got a little bit more water in than I should have, because I think I didn't. I got a little more than a cup. That doesn't gonna make any difference because we're just adding more, a little more flour. Now we have two rolls and we'd make two more. And I think by this time, I'll give myself a clean rolling pin. I'll find I'm a rolling pin freak. I got loads of them. This is a, this is a, an American ball bearing pin. And it's a great one because it does most of the work for you. But now see here at the beginning of the third turn here, that's beginning to look much more like a dough. Now turn her over again. Well, it just gets one more roll and fold and that's it. But you see it would be quite, you can do it perfectly well on a board rather than a pastry marble. I don't want to discourage you by saying you have to have all this special equipment, but I think it's useful for you to see the ideal equipment. Now roll flowering it a little bit more, and then rolling around again, and this is the final roll, and then it'll rest. But you see now that's beginning to be dough. And then it's gonna have two more rolls after this. There, that's folded over. You see now that's actually a dough. Take your fingers and go two to show that you made your two rolls in case you have to go off somewhere. Then wrap it up and into the fridge. If you don't put the marks on it, then sometimes you forget what you've done. I'm going to put it into the plastic bag and then let it rest for 40 minutes. You want the butter to firm up. And you also want the gluten in the, in the dough to rest. 
like an, like an invalid has to rest. Now, after you've done your two more rolls, then you roll it out just like a regular pastry dough and cut two circles in it. And the two circles I have are, look at my hands, are about are nine inches in diameter. There's one of them. And there's the other one on a baking sheet. And push it out the way I have there. And this is going to be the bottom layer of the ham tart. You don't want the bottom layer to rise so much. So take either two forks or a roller pricker given to us by a friend of mine. And you prick that to keep it from rising. Then you put your filling in. And if you were doing a regular PTVA, it would be an almond cream, but I'm doing a ham mixture. And this looks rather hotted, but it's quite nice. This is sliced ham that has been warmed with butter and shallots. And then thick, then there's a little sauce just made of two egg yolks and a third of a cup of cream. And the reason it looks rather hotted at this point is because you have to have it cold when it goes on. And you want it, you have to be sure and keep it in a lump. Then I've put two or three tablespoons of cheese on top. And as you notice, I've put it, put it right in the lump in the middle, leaving it almost two inch border there, which is very important because otherwise the filling will spread out. And now I'm painting the bottom layer with water. Then I'm gonna stick the top layer on. And the, what you wanna be sure to do here is to be able to Oh, there's my top layer, is to be able to seal it perfectly. So there's your top layer. Pull it out a little bit. These, and be sure, because you want it to rise properly, that the top layer is at least a quarter of an inch thick. Because if it's less than a quarter of an inch thick, it won't, may not rise. Then, here's my have a little baby knife. Make a little steam hole in the top. And then very carefully, with your fingers, press all the way around to make sure that it's sealed. And pushing it out a little bit. And then you want to make a scalloped edge all the way around. I'm just going to do just the beginning of this to show you. Eat. That won't hurt anything. And get a bowl or something that's just a little bit less. And you take a little knife and you cut a little V and then with the back of your knife, you make little, not little marks. Then about two inches later, you make another V, and you just continue around to make a little scalloped edge. I'll show you one that's finished in a little while. Just continue right around that way. Don't want to take too much time for you. And then at this point, you want to refrigerate it because you have to chill it. 